All right, the Monty Hall problem is one of those classic statistical head scratchers that takes a while to really sink in. It doesn't make sense at first, but I'm gonna try to help you through it as best we can here with Excel, because I think we can really see this happen. It's gonna be really easy. We'll even use emojis to make this really come to life. So if you're ready to begin here, I'm going to ask you to come on down and we are going to play Let's Make a Deal. If you've ever seen the show, you know that it works something like this. I'm going to kick you a scenario here. We've got three doors. One of those doors has a car. The other two have goats. Obviously, the, the car probably sounds more appealing to you than the goat. So the goal would be to be to pick the car in that random door. Uh, so you're going to pick a door. Uh, Monty, who's the host, hence the Monty Hall problem, will then open another door and show you a goat behind that door. And your question is, do you stick to the door that you chose in the first place or do you switch to the other door? So does it matter? Is there an advantage to stick versus switch? Is it just does matter uh, or is there a strategy here uh, so think about it let me know in the comments uh, whatever answer you have now don't feel bad or don't feel great about it we'll all learn together uh, if you have the intuition now to know what it is then that's fantastic uh, otherwise don't feel bad uh, I didn't get it at first either okay so we got a starter worksheet here. We're gonna work through all of these columns. And at the end, I've got a finish worksheet so you can kind of compare. I've also got a PDF. So if you wanna walk through this yourself and see how all these formulas work, uh, you can do that as well. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is just randomly shuffle our door placements. And I'm gonna do that with the ran between function. Uh, that will ask us for a number between bottom and top. I want a number between one and three. So this is just giving us a straight up random number between one and three. What we're gonna do is use this to kind of shuffle the arrangement of the uh, items behind our doors. Uh, so we'll always say that if uh, column B equals a one, we'll give it a car, otherwise it's gonna get a goat. That sounds like a conditional logic statement to me. I'm gonna start an if statement here. Uh, if B3, I'm gonna lock this in. Uh, if that equals one, then I want, and I'm going to use an emoji here instead of just typing out the word car. I'm going to open up my quotation marks because uh, emojis will still be treated as text, so we'll need that. If I do a Windows key and a semicolon here, I'm on Windows. I'm going to look for a car. Looks like I've used this recently, so it's in my uh, recent usage ones, but I can search for this as text. Uh, I like this one. I'm going to hit escape and that'll just get me back to my regular text editor. Uh, otherwise, we want to go. So again, uh, Windows key and the quotation mark. Uh, so there's a goat, hit escape, and I'll close out of that. So if B3 equals one, we want a car. Otherwise, we want a goat. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now, basically, what I want to do is just change this to a two, so if B3, if that equals two, uh, if this equals three. So you can see that in each case, we want an exclusive answer here, right? And we already see in this case, right, since uh, our door number one has a car, the other two doors have goats. Drag this down, and now you can see that, okay, we've got all the stuff behind the doors set up for us to experiment with. I'm going to do this a thousand times, I think. We can see we've got a thousand trials. So now what I want to know is what happens if we stick? What happens if we switch? Uh, so first thing, I'm just going to pick a door at random. I'm going to use a text statement here, concatenate text with a uh, ram between. So let's say we want door number, just to make this a little easier to see what we're picking here. Uh, door number, I'm going to open up those quotation marks or close them, I should say. Then we're gonna, gonna concatenate this. If I use that ampersand, it's a shorthand way to do that in Excel. Ran between one and three. 
So you want to close the parentheses there. So now what I'm doing again is just picking a door at random, just like you might would in real life. Just you know, pick door number one, door number three, etc. So now what I want to know is what's our prize if we stick and what's our prize if we switch. So the way I'm going to do that is just kind of look at uh, the results behind these doors, right? So in this case, we picked door number three. That's a goat, unfortunately. Uh, if it were door number two, we would have got a car. Uh, so we can do this with a conditional logic statement. We're going to do if f3, if it equals door number one, then that's going to be c3. Otherwise, if f3 equals door number two, then it's going to be d3. Otherwise, our last but not least result would be e3. So basically what I'm going to do is see, OK, this time it's door number three. That means there is a car. So we want, this is our prize. We, we're going to stick with that door. You can pretend that you know you pick this door. Then Mani shows you what's behind one of those other doors. It's always going to be a goat. You decide you're going to stick with the door that you have already. And then you end up with uh, whatever door this is. So this is uh, door number three. That's a goat. OK, so now if you can imagine, you could have either stuck with that door or you can actually uh, switch. So let's just translate this first stick result just into a simple win-loss. This will just make it a little bit easier to understand uh, translating those prizes into a strict you know, win-loss equation here. Uh, so if G3 equals, again, we'll do an emoji here, a car. I'm going to escape out of there. This is a win. Otherwise, that's a loss. OK. So I'm going to drag that down. And we can see our results. I've got a count if statement over here, basically just counting up all the wins. So you can imagine that in this case, we chose a door. Monty opened another door, showed us the goat behind that door. We said, you know what? I'm going to stick with the door that I picked in the first place. Here's the result. Here is the result. Now what we're going to do is what happens if we switch? So we're going to switch to obviously the other door that didn't have the goat. So we can kind of just forget about one of those doors with the goat, right? We know what's behind that door and we're not going to pick it. So we can kind of pretend that that door doesn't exist anymore. OK, so in that case, what we can do is if G3 Again, we're going to do, uh, first let me put the, not that, first let me put my quotation marks here. I'm going to put this as a goat. Just escape out of that. If that's a goat, then you know what? I need my quotation marks again. I want a car. Otherwise, I want my goat. And you know what? I can just click on this because it's recently used. I've been searching for it, but you know, we already used it recently, so I can just click on that. All right. So let's cool it, close our parentheses, quotation marks, all that. OK, so this is saying uh, if we switch what happens, we're going to get one of those remaining cars or goats. OK? Now we want to know what happens if we switch. So the way I'll find that is if g3 equals a goat. That means that we win. Otherwise, that means that we lost. And this is kind of interesting to think about, right? So let's say that uh, there was a goat behind this door. Monty opens another door showing you a goat. That means there's only one door left. That's a car. That means that you win. So I'm going to drag this down. And again, this takes a little while to really understand. I'm going to go over here to our results. But if we stay, we get 345 this time. And if we switch, we actually get more. So it's not a 50-50 split. It tends to be about 
uh, 33.66 or you know one third, two third kind of a trade off. I'm going to calculate this again. So again, I can go up to formula here and calculate now. What this is going to do is just keep doing our simulation over and over. And you see each time that we approximately get about winning, you know, about a third of the time if we stay and then two thirds of the time if we switch. So how on earth is this possible? It doesn't seem like it would matter if we stick with our door versus switching. Uh, however, the real crux of this comes with this idea that if you, you know, are going to switch, right? you now have some information about what's behind the other door, uh, that there's a goat behind uh, one of those doors. You know that now because Monty showed you. So your chances improve with that additional information. I'm going to go to this GIF here. I think this is really, really helpful. Uh, so if we see here, I'm going to pause this here. So we've got a one third chance of winning, right? We have one third, one third, one third, each door equally likely to have the chance. So we have that door. Let's say we pick it, right? Now Monty is going to show us one of these other doors, okay? We know that there's a goat in that door now. So since we knew that there was a one third chance of getting the car between uh, or behind door number one, uh, then there was a one third door number two, one third door number three, now, since we know that there's a goat behind door number two, it's almost like that two thirds probability gets condensed into door number three. Uh, so let's play that again. We have one third, one third, one third. The door opens, that two third goes over to there, and then it's twice as likely. I'll link to this video. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the uh, workbook. So I will go back to our final outcome here. Again, I can recalculate this and we will just keep getting about a one third, two thirds split. And that's why now that you saw the video or the, the GIF, I should say in the last slide there or the last worksheet, I should say, uh, that's what happens. Uh, that's why you get this split that we're getting. Oh, and this one's pretty, pretty spot on. Uh, one third, two thirds, almost exactly. So I hope that that helped and you learned something. Take some time to understand it. I think especially these parts here, once you get to the switching, uh, doesn't start to be real clear what's happening. But I think, you know, between looking at this in Excel and then looking at this animation uh, over here, I should say, it's pretty cool. I, I'm seeing that in these Office products now, you can actually pause GIFs, which, which is pretty neat. Uh, so do that, you can pause the GIFs go back to the uh, scenario, go back to the worksheets. I'll clear all this data out so you can start with a blank worksheet if you'd like. Uh, I've also got a printable file if you wanted to follow along uh, with, the, with the PDF demo note worksheet of, of this exercise. So thank you again. Please let me know if you've got questions or ideas. You know, how do you find this idea of the Monty Hall problem? What does it mean to you? Uh, how do you explain it? Does it still just boggle your mind? If that's the case, then that's equally cool to talk about in the comments too. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you as always for watching. Uh, please check out my other videos. I've got a resource library of teaching tools for data analytics, how to teach it, how to learn it. Uh, please check that out and subscribe. So thank you again. Take care. Bye.